It was just a decade ago that Colorado voters decided to legalize marijuana. And now there could be another major change to the state's drug laws, this time to legalize some psychedelic substances. Denver 7's Megan Lopez once again. It's hard to believe that it's been a decade since Colorado voters passed a ballot measure to legalize marijuana, the first major change to the state's drug law in years. In the blink of an eye, dispensaries bloomed all over the state and something people spent years behind bars for before became big business. In November, voters will be asked whether it's time for another major update to Colorado drug laws, this time with psychedelics. Proposition 122 asks voters if they want to allow licensed healing centers to administer psychedelic mushrooms to people 21 and older. Cities and counties would not be allowed to ban them. It would also decriminalize the personal possession and cultivation of five substances, psilocybin, psilocin, ibogaine, mescaline, and DMT. However, the measure doesn't allow for retail sales. Oregon passed a similar measure in 2020, and in 2019, voters in Denver decided to decriminalize psychedelics with Ordinance 301. In this Denver 7 Election 360, you'll hear from the group behind the ballot measure, an opponent, a patient, a professor who studied these drugs, and someone who helped push for the decriminalization effort in Denver. For supporters of Proposition 122, the Natural Medicine Health Act creates a tremendous opportunity for new modalities and healings. They say these natural medicines have been around for thousands of years and they're safer than opioids. They point to Denver's decriminalization as a success story and they want to be clear. We don't want to see a commercialized model. Uh, we don't want to see recreational dispensaries for for these natural medicines. That's why the measure calls for licensed healing centers with an intake and a screening process and for Colorado's Department of Regulatory Agencies to be involved. We need to be really careful with this. We want to have access programs. We want to make sure that these prices aren't getting so out of hand that it isn't equitable. They're asking people to vote yes for the sake of healing. It has done great good for many different people to be able to expand themselves, to learn, to grow, to self-heal, and that is, that's a powerful thing. For years, Alan Floyd has lived with an unbearable truth. I have a terminal illness. Something most of us can't even begin to fathom. And uh, I was told I had two years to live. Since his diagnosis, he's dealt with severe depression and a lot of pain. He's tried everything. Opioids, fentanyl, oxycodone, Dilaudid were the primary ones I was taking. When none of that worked, he turned to psychedelics, and he says it's been life-changing. The depression has lifted to the point where my psychiatrist says I no longer have treatment-resistant depression. My attitude is a lot better. I understand that I'm dying, and I'm okay with that now. The clinical trials uh, completed on psilocybin mushrooms have mostly focused on the benefits for depression and end-of-life distress. Allen's experience is not a one-off. Studies by John Hopkins, UC San Francisco, and even the FDA have found benefits in psychedelics. They're finding that 60 to 80 percent of participants are reporting an immediate and substantial decrease in depression for end-of-life distress. Shannon Hughes from CSU says it's safer than cannabis, you can't overdose on it, and you won't get addicted to it. Psilocybin is actually one of the safest psychoactive substances. It's a con. The idea that this is really about health is not true at all. Jeff Hunt from the Centennial Institute doesn't believe the proponents. He says this measure is about one thing, money. This is about commercialization. This is eventually about making sure that uh, these companies can uh, get these drugs out there, make as much money as they can. While supporters see Denver as an example, Hunt has a very different take. No one would be saying that we're doing very well in the city of Denver with our drug issues. He worries this is going the same way as marijuana and will eventually face the same problems. We still have a really big black market problem in the state. We need to be looking at ways to get people off drugs, not finding ways for people to take further drugs. So if there really are medical benefits, he wants the FDA to review the substances, test them, and then come up with rules. We're not at all opposed to utilizing that pathway. But he says this ballot measure is not the way. Of all the voices you'd expect to support Proposition 122, community activist Melanie Rose Rogers is probably one of them. In 2019, 
It was a grassroots movement. We were all volunteers. She was one of the organizers behind Denver's decriminalization effort. We just believe in the overall benefits of psilocybin mushrooms. And yet, she's one of the loudest critics of this measure. It's important that we do this, you know, in a right way, and we don't rush to do it. She wants decriminalization, not legalization, to be the first step, and she doesn't like that an out-of-state group is spearheading the effort, pouring $2.8 million into this campaign. It is not Colorado community led. She also has concerns about Dora regulating psychedelics, the fact that cities can't reject these centers, and social equity, worrying that not enough minority voices were included in this discussion. And I actually think that the cost of sitting in these licensed healing centers are not going to be able to be affordable for everybody. So she wants people to think twice before saying yes. This year marks a decade since Colorado voters became the first state to legalize marijuana. This year, they'll be asked whether it's time to do the same for psychedelics and significantly rewrite the state's drug policies once again. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. We've made it easy to keep track of the 2022 midterm elections. You can read up on all the ballot measures and all the candidates in our voters guide on denver7.com. Now a special thank you to Megan Lopez for all her hard work during this election season. And you can get election updates on November 8th right here on Denver 7. We will have live coverage throughout the night tracking results as they come in. Thank you very much for watching.